Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I will say today that what are the problems, what are the issues of 2024 presidential election? You see, very recently there was a research conducted by Statist Research Department. It was published on um, uh, July 30, 2024, right? And they did a research uh, in association with UGov and uh, the data was released on uh, july uh, i said that uh, july 30 2024 and uh, the survey time period was 21st july to 23rd july right and um, number of respondents were only 1605 age group uh, definitely uh, 18 years and above so what are the main problems main issues of the united states of america prior to the presidential election in this uh, in this election period people will ask these questions people are eager to hear uh, the answers or feedbacks of these problems from the candidates from donald trump and from harris for from kamala harris who speaks better who shows better policies who uh, gives better suggestions who has a clear vision regarding these issues these, these are the burning issues before the united states of america right first is inflation or price rise is 25 percent people in that survey 25 percent people believe that inflation or price rise is a is the major problem most problem there in the usa okay how the problem is i will tell you uh, uh, in the uh, end uh, of this video next immigration is another problem i will tell about immigration also 11 percent people believe that immigration is a great problem in usm then healthcare is another problem i would say job and economy job and economy jobs uh, unemployment problem is there 10 percent people believe that jobs and economy is a problem then abortion abortion is a problem abortion issue right roe versus what a uh, um, uh, what is the judgment that 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 judgment i, I will tell uh, a little about that then climate and environment that is another issue in the united states of america then civil rights is issue six percent people believe and national security five percent people think that national security is a challenge national security uh, is a great issue uh, before the people right taxes and government spending is another issue and then guns, guns, gun violence is another problem, major problem. 4% uh, uh, people believe that. And civil liberties is a problem. Education, problems in education department is a problem. And uh, uh, crime, social crimes, I mean, and uh, uh, the uh, crime is a problem in the USM. Foreign policy is 2% people believe that foreign policy, US foreign policy is uh, not up to the mark. And criminal justice reform, 1% believe that criminal justice reform is an issue. Okay. So, I would, not, I would like to say about the inflation. How is inflation? It is very difficult to tell uh, elaborately about all these things. But I will tell a little bit uh, about this, um, about the problems. At first, I would like to focus on price rise or inflation. How price rise or inflation is being uh, is um, uh, being uh, affected uh, uh, the uh, has been affected the people in the USA right so Vice President Kamala Harris has picked up the baton from President Joe Biden we all know on the uh, fight against so-called greedflation she says uh, people say in the USA greedflation right so inflation has come from greedflation the notion that the United States inflation crisis was exacerbated by excessive corporate profit making that marked up goods or shrink their sizes and padded businesses burden lines. So is there any truth of those claims? Sure, some definitely there are some claims because uh, many people believe and Kamala Harris herself also believe that believes that um, that the too much greed of the businessmen through too much greed of the of the of the uh, what is a business barons uh, 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 are the are uh, prime uh, primarily responsible for high 
uh, high rise of price or inflation right so we all know that uh, price went up during the pandemic when the supply chains shut down and failed yes it has happened everywhere in the world but our society but our supply chains have now improved and prices are still too high Harris asked in a, uh, uh, during, uh, during one of her uh, speeches uh, recently in North Carolina, right? So many of the big food companies are seeing their highest profits in two decades. And while many grocery chains pass along uh, these savings, others still aren't. So this is a great problem in the U U.S. So Harris, Kamala Harris, the vice president, vice president uh, says that, quote, I know most businesses are creating jobs, contributing to our economy and playing by the rules, but some are not and that's just not and we need to take action when that is the case." Unquote. So this indicates clearly what is the view or viewpoint of the vice president or the presidential candidate of a democratic party, a democrat. So the Democrats, uh, Democrats led by uh, Kamala Harris, believe that that the what is said, greedflation is the reason, and too much profit making by the businessmen and uh, by the business barons and traders is the uh, are are the causes of inflation okay and she says that is definitely they are contributing the businessmen or the business definitely improves our economy and uh, contribute to the economy and they are also providing jobs to the uh, many youths but despite that this is true but this despite that if they cannot control the uh, the uh, prices of essential commodities then they will or the government will have to take an action right to take an action so she, uh, he uh, she has clearly indicated because always uh, always she is in favor of people she is in favor of common people she is always in favor of poor people she is always in favor of disadvantaged people she is always in favor of hispanic people she is always in favor of the asian people right so she is always in favor of the middle class people on the other hand uh, president, uh, uh, former President Donald Trump, her opponent is uh, a def nationalist definitely and he gives priority to the interest or benefits of the rich people because he himself is a very rich person and he himself is a businessman, right? And so always he sees the interest of the business community. On the other hand, Kamala Harris sees the interest of the poor people because she knows how the problems, how uh, how her family faced the faced problems, right? And so she, uh, she, she knows it better. And secondly, I would say that immigration um, uh, immigration is a great problem in the united states of america now immigrants composed of estimated 13.9 percent of the u.s population in 2022 now account you to roughly 46 million 46 million out of 330 million people 46 million people are immigrants in the united states of america so this is a great challenge many americans many Americans, Native Americans believe that the immigrants are um, posing threats to their security, posing threat to the job, pro posing, posing a threat uh, to their livelihood, to their progress and uh, to, their, um, uh, to their success. Okay? And uh, that is why they, many, many do not, um, uh, do not uh, like those uh, illegal immigrants particularly uh, 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 get increased in their states. In their state, right? So together, um, immigrants, together, immigrants and their U.S.-born children made up about 27 percent of U.S. Im inhabitants per the current population survey. So this is you just imagine, including their children, they comprise uh, of uh, 27 percent of uh, U.S. inhabitants, right? So in '70, when there were fewer than 10 million immigrants in the country recently recent figures still uh, fail uh, fail you know, fall before the record high of 14.8% of uh, 1890 so as of 2022 mexico was the top country of origin of the us immigrants mexico and second um, second comprised of indians 6% uh, china including hong kong and macau 
five percent, while the Philippines uh, Philippines uh, are um, of uh, uh, belong to a four percent population of the U.S. Right. So, how do Americans feel about immigration? Let me um, highlight the perception of people uh, there. As February 2024 poll by Gallup showed that 28% of surveyed Americans considered immigration to be the uh, top problem facing the United States, right? So, in a separate Gallup poll conducted uh, that uh, conducted in the same month, it, uh, it was revealed by the report that the majority of respondents felt that illegal immigration was critical threat to U.S. national security. Okay, there are some other reports uh, such as uh, uh, a Pew Research Center poll was, uh, report was there, and other reports also are there. Okay, but let me tell another report. A Pew Research Center poll conducted in April this year found that some 60% of the registered voters surveyed believed that undocumented immigrants, undocumented immigrants currently in the United States should be allowed to stay okay they said that the undocumented us uh, what i say uh, immigrants uh, should be allowed to stay uh, there with 36% of respondents saying that undocumented Im immigrants should have the opportunity to apply for citizenship good and in addition a large majority of americans still consider immigration to be the overall good for the country and on the other hand many people think that immigration is good for the country and for the economy right how has congress tried to address the issue the most recent push for an immigration policy overall uh, was in 2013 right so following a decade in which congress debates um, numerous immigration reforms some considered comprehensive and other uh, piecemeal comprehensive immigration reform refers to omnibus legislation that attempted to address the following issues what number one demand for high and low skill labor number two the legal status of the millions of undocumented immigrants living in the country number three border security number four interior or interior enforcement right so the last major legislation to make it through congress was under president donald reagan in 1986 when his administration granted legal amnesty to some 3 million undocumented residents. In 1990, President George H.W. Uh, Bush uh, further expanded legal immigration by increasing the cap for immigrant visas from 2,70,000 to 7 lakh or 700,000, though he lowered the quota to 6,75,000 after several years in 2007 president george w bush, george w bush worked with congressional democrats to reach a compromise on a new comprehensive bill but it ultimately failed to win enough support in the senate so this is the situation but uh, what did uh, barack obama during barack obama's uh, tenure uh, with legislation thwarted barack obama focused on executive action okay a tactic that his successors continued in 2012 the administration began a program known as DACM or deferred action for child arrivals uh, childhood arrivals which offered renewals two-year deportation deferrals and work permits to undocumented immigrants who had arrived in the United States as children and had no criminal record. Okay. Obama characterized a move as a stopgap measure and urged Congress to pass the DREAM Act or Development Relief and Education for Alien Minors. Legislation first introduction in 2001 that would have benefited many of the same people since then more than 830,000 people have participated in DACM and it's estimated that almost 1.2 million more were eligible as of 2003. Obama attempted to extend similar benefits to undocumented um, uh, papers of US citizens and permanent residents through a program known as Deferred Action for Parents of 
Americans D A P M. But the Supreme Court effectively killed it in 2016. So this was the uh, op option or this was the action of Barack Obama. But uh, what? Uh, okay, I will tell that um, what did Trump administration after that in 2020? Uh, uh, Donald Trump uh, was the 45th president uh, of the United States. What did his administration? Okay, in this matter. So immigration remains a signature issue for Trump. He blames previous administrations for failing to secure the southern border. Okay, and in his first term, he advocated for sharply reducing both legal and illegal immigration. He does not uh, like immigration in the USA. He repeatedly used executive action to reshape asylum, deportation and border policy. Not only that, border security and um, enforcement issue also was looked after by him or taken care by him very seriously. Trump, Donald Trump, vowed to expand the wall along the US-Mexico border because maximum immigration, uh, immigration takes place from Mexican border or from uh, Mexico, right? So which he claimed would stop drugs and gangs from entering the country. So he was unsuccessful in securing funding from Congress, leading to a federal government shutdown in 2019 and the subsequent declaration of a national emergency, which allowed him to divert funds to build the wall. Okay, but what is the uh, what is say what is the conception or what is the perception of Biden and Harris government? Right. So ahead of 2020 presidential election, Joe Biden campaigned on overturning almost all the Trump administration's immigration policies. Okay. Since then, the Biden administration has reduced immigration enforcement within the United States, ended the travel bans, expanded green card access for certain undocumented immigrations, immigrants and ended the controversial Title 42 policy, though it did initially maintain many pandemic restricted restrictions. Okay, pandemic related restrictions, rather, I would say. Title 42 policy, uh, uh, it initially maintained many pandemic related uh, restrictions. Okay, the administration also, I mean, um, uh, by, um, uh, Trump's administration also initially halted construction of the no, it is uh, though, though Donald Trump uh, initiated a construction of wall uh, between uh, Mexico and uh, US border, but Donald Trump, what he did, his administration initially halted construction of the US Mexico border wall, though it has since moved forward with plans to build additional sanctions, expanded TPS production terminated the uh, remain in Mexico program with Supreme Court approval and raised the refugee camp to 1,25,000 for fiscal years 2022 to 2024. However, Biden's efforts to undo Trump era policies have been challenged by the historic influx of uh, migrants at the southern border, right? So, the record surge in border crossings has prompted the administration to implement several new restrictions since 2023, including a so-called transit ban allowing the government to deny asylum to immigrants who did not previously apply for um, protection in a third country. In addition, the administration can temporarily bar asylum uh, requests when the number of illegal crossings exceeded a certain threshold since the start of 2024, illegal crossings have slowed. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the situation. This is the um, uh, perception of both um, Biden administration and his uh, uh, his predecessor Donald Trump's administration. And in regard to healthcare, healthcare is another. Um, great issue or great challenge in the United States of America. They are um, in the in 2022 US healthcare spending reached 4.5 trillion dollar, okay, which averages to 13,493 dollar per person. This comparison 
the average cost of healthcare per person in other wealthy countries is less than half as much so in the usa the healthcare cost of common people is too much okay so how much does the united states spend on healthcare let me see or let me say the united states has one of the highest costs of healthcare in the world in 2022 us healthcare spending reached 4.5 trillion dollar which averages to 13493 dollar per person by comparison the average cost of healthcare per person in other wealthy countries is less than half as much so us's healthcare cost is more than double uh, of other equivalent countries okay while the covid-19 pandemic exacerbated the trend in raising healthcare costs such spending has been increasingly long, long before covid-19 began so relative to the size of the economy healthcare costs have increased over the past few decades from 5% of the gdp in 1962 to 17% of gdp in 2022 so healthcare cost in the united states of america is really too high so what is uh, the perception regarding healthcare of uh, democrat uh, democratic candidate uh, kamala harris kamala harris she uh, believes that there is perhaps no more complicated or more personal issue for americans than healthcare so healthcare is a is one of the prominent issues of the usa and uh, kamala harris also believes in that and she thinks that um, he, she told that we are also at a crisis point for healthcare in america big corporations she believes that big corporations are still putting profits over people's well being and the republicans are determined to destroy what progresses we have made i mean the democrats made and uh, put those same corporations back in charge of the system the next democratic president needs the next democratic president i mean she is indicating indicating herself that if she comes in power she will um, need a clear transformative and achievable vision of how they can finally change the broken system for good medicare system and they are th- they think that uh, they will uh, they, they they will take care of a healthcare system for all the people not a not a privileged section not a not only poor section not only working class people rather people of all categories all communities all religions all working groups or all professionals okay she says that in america healthcare should be a right she considers that in america healthcare should be a right not a privilege only for those who cannot afford it it's why we need medicare for all so she believes medicare for all people in the us right so that is why she understands that when her mother was uh, suffering from cancer she knows the pangs she now knows how problem it was uh, to pay the uh, bills uh, in the hospitals right so now um, uh, she also told that medicare for all will cover this is her perception that she considers kamala harris uh, considers that medicare for all will cover all medically necessary services including emergency room visits doctor visits vision dental hearing aids mental health and substance use disorder treatment and comprehensive reproductive health care services it will also allow the secretary of state and human services to negotiate for lowering participating uh, drug prices uh, okay prescription of drug prices so this is her perception she wants to um, provide medicare for all for all people in the usa it is not that only one section of people so her perception or her plan of medicare is uh, like this that she says that quote we will also expand the program to include other benefits americans desperately need that will save money in the long run such as an expanded mental health program including telehealth and easier access to early diagnosis and treatment 
and innovative patient programs to help people identify the right doctor and understand how to navigate the health system unquote so this is the perception this is the plan regarding health care of our uh, democratic president uh, presidential candidate Kamala Harris okay so um, uh, she also said that first when we pass my plan all Americans will immediately have the ability to buy into Medicare so this is now clear she also firmly believes that 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 uh, gun violence is really she also believes that gun violence is a problem in the United States and she if she comes in power she will definitely try to reduce or try to uh, control gun, gun violence from the USM okay so and jobs and economy and the policies um, uh, they are going to take if they come in power uh, once again their policy will provide jobs to millions of youths and students and they are uh, they are also constructing about 2 million houses uh, uh, in the USA uh, for homeless people okay so that uh, so that people who cannot afford uh, uh, will be able to afford homes okay so this is her policy next abortion is also another policy you see there is a debate between the democrats and republicans they think like donald trump they and their party they think that every fetus is important yes definitely harris also believes that but even you see the um, the what judgment of Roe versus Warim. In that judgment, it is said that women has a um, reproductive, uh, their reproductive health. They have the right to uh, to uh, to uh, to their reproductive health. So women have the right to decide whether the fetus will be kept or not. Okay. So this is a debate, and people will decide who will be uh, whom they will support but i believe that uh, the uh, the belief or the perception of the democratic party is uh, right and kamala harris being a woman will always try to provide health care definitely i told just and she will provide more jobs and and she will try to um, uh, heighten or develop or increase economy and she will think being a woman she will definitely give priority to women's abortion rights okay next climate and uh, environment this is also women understand better how to how the problems of climate change affect their lives because they are the worst sufferer being the manager of the homes being the manager of the houses they know how to manage the families how to manage the uh, household chores and and how to maintain the family right so during natural disasters natural calamity like storm like tornado when the houses become uh, uh, become what is say disturbed or destroyed or abolished they the women being the managers of the houses they have to take the leading role in arranging all those things right so she or she, she definitely will give more emphasis or importance on climate and environment issues okay and civil rights and uh, barack obama also worked for civil rights and she being an attorney uh, attorney general she knows what are the civil rights of people and definitely she will put more emphasis at least i know that she will give more emphasis or more um, uh, uh, more um, uh, what do you say focus on um, uh, on promoting civil rights of people for all particularly for the hispanic people for the asian people and for the black people right okay so 
national security is uh, is another challenge in the united states national security uh, she knows better she knows the constitution because uh, she uh, was a student of political science and economics so she knows both economics and politics okay theoretical and as well as with his uh, with her uh, long experience of working as a uh, as an attorney general and vice president so uh, she knows um, uh, that uh, what uh, are the other challenges and how those challenges can be tackled and she has her own plans okay so national security uh, is the uh, is that definitely always remains the top priority of all the uh, heads of states so def definitely if she becomes the president uh, her priority will also be the same the so taxes and government spending she will take care gun violence i told that in gun violence uh, in the us young students come to college schools and colleges with uh, with their guns and if there is a, there uh, is a scuffle a scuffle or uh, some uh, what do you say uh, some shouting or exchange of words they uh, they they bring out their revolver and they shoot and sometimes they shoot indiscriminately but this is a great challenge great problem and the uh, democrats uh, particularly uh, harris thinks that gun violence should be controlled and i am very much sure that she will try her level best to control i being a teacher also think that gun violence should be controlled in the united states of america and anywhere in the world and then civil liberties she will promote and safeguard the civil liberties of all type of people and education in education sector also she will spend more money so that more teachers can be recruited more better educa better education can be imparted to the students and children and um, better skills can be developed of the of all the students okay and crimes in regard to crime she will try all um, uh, endeavors or she will take all endeavors to control crime okay and violence against women violence against poor violence against black violence against all sections of society right and foreign policy definitely she will take foreign policy we will expect that uh, she will take a leading role so that uh, war can be stopped from the world there should not be any war there should not be any violence there should not be what is a uh, proliferation of uh, weapons there should not be proliferation or uh, or or any nuclear war or space war or uh, any other physical war that is going on in ukraine and russia and ukraine in israel gaza and palestine those things should be stopped permanently permanently there should be uh, i mean war should be sh should be dropped the w world the w world must see a war free uh, environment a war free situation right and then foreign policy and then criminal justice reform she will definitely do with this we expect and people expect in the usa that she will do a lot for the people and being she, if she comes in power she will be the first asian woman she will be the first uh, african woman she will be the first attorney general woman she will be the uh, ultimately she will be the first woman to hold the presidential uh, uh, post and uh, i being a votary of women's empowerment i expect that she will come in power so that uh, gender empowerment is established in the usa with this hope and expectation i would like to conclude my video here thank you thank you very much